Welcome back to Will's Recaps. Today our story is about a tale of unexpected bonds. We meet San, a man grappling with loss, and Xiao Wen, a young girl seeking belonging. Their worlds collide when San, amidst personal turmoil, encounters Xiao Wen, who is alone and vulnerable. Despite initial resistance, San reluctantly takes Xiao Wen under his wing, and a unique father-daughter relationship blossoms. Alongside San's loyal friends, they navigate challenges from caring for Xiao Wen to honoring San's father's wishes. Amidst heartache and joy, they find solace in each other's company, forging an unbreakable bond. Through moments of sorrow and triumph, they discover the power of love, friendship, and acceptance. In the end, as they gaze at the stars, they realize that family isn't just about blood. It's about the connections we make and the memories we create together. Without further ado, let's get into the detail story. A buzzer on a mobile phone reverberates in the room, rousing a young girl. She then stirred her grandmother who was resting beside her, but her endeavors were futile. Her grandmother remained unresponsive. Meanwhile, there was a man seated in the driver's position of a vehicle, fuming over the phone. The man with nearly bald hair then disconnected the call and exited his car. Subsequently, he retrieved a flower-adorned greeting sign from the trunk and positioned it in the pathway. He proceeded to stroll down a meandering pathway and entered a residence. Inside, he promptly requested a towel and tepid water from a bespectacled man. He then cleansed the grandmother's body with a towel and lukewarm water that had been readied. A young girl had been observing her grandmother earlier. She witnessed the man touching her still sleeping grandma. She struck the man with a branch. Subsequently, the man seized the child and confined her in a chamber, ensuring she wouldn't cause any disturbance. Then he resumed attending to the deceased grandmother. Upon completion, the grandmother's relatives entered the room while the two men departed. The daughter-in-law of the grandma inspected her mother-in-law but couldn't find her ring. She then called for the two men who were undertakers and searched them both. The men were offended, but they proved their innocence. They even stripped down to their pants before departing. Following this, the woman fled. The grandmother's body was placed in a casket and lifted into a van stationed at the alley's entrance. This little girl goes by the name Wu Xiao Wen, and she remained locked up. Her cousin informed her that her grandmother was inside the coffin. Acting impulsively, the child broke free through the window and chased after the van carrying her grandmother. Upon arriving at the cremation site, the vehicle halted in front of a house with a funeral services sign. Mo San Mei, the bald man, entered the house and received a peach from his acquaintance. Seating himself again, he checked his phone, only to be astonished by his girlfriend's breakup message. Hastily, he rose from his seat and departed. San drove recklessly, and by chance, he spotted the little girl, Xiao Wen. The child inquired something from a street sweeper. San disregarded the child and proceeded to a clothing store that remained closed. He pounded on the door until a woman emerged. Initially resistant to opening the door for San due to his noise, she eventually relented. San swiftly lifted the woman and placed her on the bed, only to realize she was his girlfriend. Another man emerged from the bathroom, prompting San to challenge him to a duel. Despite his efforts, San ended up losing. The couple discussed their marriage plans, revealing that the woman was expecting the other man's child. She expressed doubts about San's suitability as a father, leading to her decision to end their relationship. Angered, San stormed out of the room. Upon his return home, San found himself trailed by the little girl from earlier who inquired about her grandmother's whereabouts. Ignoring the child, San was indifferent, but she persisted in attempting to break into his house despite her uncle's plea for her to return home. San forcibly escorted the girl, Xiao Wen, out of his residence. While San smoked outside his house, a neighbor approached him, inviting him to join his wedding business. San bluntly declined the offer. As the neighbor departed, San noticed that his funeral services sign was worn out, contrasting with his neighbor's well-maintained wedding organizer service sign. It rained during the night. San gazed out the window of his house, absorbed in smoking. Two of San's acquaintances sensed that he was troubled. When they broached the topic with San, he felt uneasy and disliked it, interpreting it as mockery. Amidst their discussion, Xiao Wen suddenly returned, drenched in sweat, persistently inquiring about her grandmother's whereabouts. Xiao Wen's uncle arrived again, puzzled by the girl's reluctance to leave. Just as he was about to inquire, Xiao Wen ran off. The uncle, struck by an idea, proposed entrusting Xiao Wen to San. Initially hesitant, 
Sans' bespectacled friend promptly accepted when offered money by Xiao Wen's uncle. They agreed to watch over Xiao Wen for three days. Subsequently, Sans' female friend ushered Xiao Wen in, drying her off and dressing her in clothes provided by her uncle. Xiao Wen then requested noodles and garlic, reminiscing about her grandmother's dining habits. Accidentally dropping her noodles, Xiao Wen hurriedly picked them up. San, observing this, scolded her for dirtying the food. But Xiao Wen reassured him, recalling her grandmother's teachings. After the meal, Xiao Wen asked San to play, reminiscent of the games she used to play with her grandmother. Before commencing the game, San noticed a gold ring near Xiao Wen and proposed it as the betting item. He mentioned being falsely accused of stealing the ring, despite Xiao Wen being the actual culprit. Xiao Wen explained she took the ring to prevent it from being taken by others in her family. The four of them played together, but even against a child, the three adults lost. During sleep, San was disturbed by dripping from the bed above him. Annoyed, he grumbled at Xiao Wen, who had wet the bed while sleeping next to his friend. Xiao Wen confessed she was afraid to use the bathroom due to scary dolls inside. San promptly placed Xiao Wen's blanket in the washing machine and then showed her the two dolls. San's friend suggested Xiao Wen return to sleep on San's bed, while San opted to sleep on a chair. In the morning, San was awakened by a call from his father, instructing him to bring a thin red book to their meeting. Searching for the book in the mattress, San recalled putting everything in the washing machine the previous night. Consequently, San had to postpone inheriting the house from his father by another month, as the writing in the book had been lost. To San, the situation seemed overly complex for a father intending to pass on a house. His impatience led to him being struck with a stick by his father, who grew suspicious of San's intentions regarding the house. San's father warned him that he was always monitoring his actions. Shortly after, San received a call from his friend, urging him to go to the hospital to collect a body. Frustrated and resolved to close his business, San refused. This angered his father further, prompting San to flee to his friend's side. Now seated in the hospital waiting room, San is interrupted by Xiao Wen, who incessantly asks about her grandmother. San encounters his friend carrying the body of a recently deceased person. His friend informs San that a little girl has passed away. San's gaze shifts to Xiao Wen, and he decides to take her to see her grandmother, on the condition that she obeys him. San escorts Xiao Wen to a funeral parlor where the deceased child lies. Offering his condolences, San proposes his funeral services. He also expresses regret, revealing that he too has a daughter named Xiao Wen. After receiving the contract letter, San photographed it and sent it to his father. Now at the funeral home, San instructed Xiao Wen to remain in the car. Initially obedient, the girl stayed put. However, upon spotting the coffin, she recalled her cousin's words about their grandmother being inside. Xiao Wen then chased after the coffin and entered the building, causing a commotion at someone else's funeral. The family became upset at the presence of a child in the funeral home. As a consequence of the incident, San received a rebuke from the staff and was warned not to return. San approached Xiao Wen in the car and scolded her. Initially defiant, Xiao Wen brandished her stick at San. Instead of reprimanding her, San instructed her to stab him, lowering himself to her height and pointing towards the chimney atop the building. He explained to the little girl that her grandmother had passed away and gone to heaven. Xiao Wen, beginning to comprehend, cried upon realizing that her grandmother had departed forever. San's female friend promptly consoled the crying Xiao Wen, while his bespectacled friend reassured her that her grandmother had ascended to heaven. San added that Xiao Wen's grandmother had transformed into a star in the sky. Shortly after, a pink potted plant ordered by San arrived, intended for his client the following day. During sleep, San tumbled off his bed as he shared it with his friend. Upon noticing Xiao Wen sitting outside, gazing at the stars, San paid no mind and returned to sleep on the chair. Come morning, San was dismayed to find Xiao Wen scribbling on his client's pot. At the cremation site, San eyed his client nervously, then turned to his friend to inquire about the pot. Despite various attempts, San's friend failed to rectify the situation. San covered the pot with a black cloth and attempted to apologize, keeping it out of his client's reach. However, the client, impatient, forcefully seized the pot from San. Unfazed by the scribbles, the client and his spouse bowed to San, expressing that their daughter used to enjoy drawing. The wife then approached Xiao Wen to tie her hair. The client expressed deep gratitude to San. Back at home, they shared snacks together. San's bespectacled friend remarked that Xiao Wen wasn't as bothersome as they initially thought. However, 
When Xiao Wen dropped a snack and attempted to eat it off the floor, San scolded her once more. He then opened a jar of snacks and offered them to Xiao Wen. Unaware that the jar didn't contain food, San and Xiao Wen both consumed its contents. Realizing the mistake, San rushed Xiao Wen to the hospital. After a thorough examination, the doctor cleared Xiao Wen to return home. While at home, Xiao Wen emerged from the bathroom. The three adults immediately searched for the swallowed object, eventually locating it. Xiao Wen's condition was deemed stable thereafter. Subsequently, San received a call from Xiao Wen's uncle. Later, San and his friends went to meet Xiao Wen's uncle, who had returned home. However, as he was about to hand over Xiao Wen, the uncle got into an argument with his wife. She refused to take care of Xiao Wen, complaining that her husband was more concerned with other people's children than their own. Xiao Wen then chased after San and his friends as they headed home. Ultimately, San willingly took on the responsibility of caring for Xiao Wen. In the car, San's friend teased him about his past habit of scolding Xiao Wen. Upon arriving home, their car halted, and San's father was already standing in front of the house. As San stepped out of the car, his father immediately struck him. His father was furious upon learning that San was taking care of a young girl. Just as San's father was about to strike him again, Xiao Wen intervened and persuaded him to stop. Before leaving, San's father threatened to kick San out of the house. Due to the incident, San found it difficult to sleep. He moved to the sofa and began using his cell phone. He was shocked to receive a wedding invitation from his ex-girlfriend. Shortly after, San fell from his chair. Xiao Wen, who was apparently awake, witnessed the incident and quietly laughed at San. The next morning, San woke up to Xiao Wen tapping him on the face. The child requested San's cell phone number, which she then recorded on her smartwatch. On a whim, Xiao Wen sent a photo of San falling over from the previous night. San looked at the photo and Xiao Wen smiled mischievously. They had breakfast outdoors, where Xiao Wen quickly devoured her noodles. Despite San's warning to eat slowly and not pick up fallen noodles, Xiao Wen insisted, citing her grandmother's teachings. San scolded her nonetheless before they parted ways. Later, San received a call from Xiao Wen, instructing him to meet her at the park. There, Xiao Wen introduced San to an elderly man who expressed his desire for a funeral service for himself. Initially hesitant, San found the idea odd as the man was still alive. However, the grandfather proposed a high payment, suggesting an emperor's funeral concept. San's friend immediately agreed without consulting San. That evening, San, his friends, and Xiao Wen enjoyed a meal together, hosting a small party. San was even seen raising a toast with Xiao Wen, indicating a growing bond between them. They began preparations for the grandfather's event, renting costumes and hiring paid guests. On the day of the event, everyone arrived dressed in elaborate costumes and makeup. The paid guests shed tears, led by San's friend. However, the celebration was short-lived as the grandfather's family arrived and promptly arrested San. At the police station, San and his two friends sat silently as they observed the debate between the grandfather's family and the officers. Xiao Wen noticed a wound on San's temple from the earlier commotion. She sprayed her saliva on her hand and applied it to San's wound, initially causing him to flinch. Xiao Wen explained that her grandmother had taught her it could prevent inflammation. Subsequently, the officers approached San and his friends, requesting their signatures. Once done, they were permitted to leave. As they descended the stairs, San encountered the grandfather, who revealed he had spent his money intentionally to prevent family discord. The grandfather expressed gratitude to San, mentioning he knew Xiao Wen's grandmother. Returning home, San was taken aback by his father's destructive behavior as he smashed a window and berated San for conducting a funeral for the living. Once again, Xiao Wen defended San, claiming responsibility. San then poured out his pent-up emotions, expressing his frustration at always being perceived as wrong by his father. In response, San's older sister slapped him and demanded their father leave San, who was left teary-eyed. Later that night, San repaired Xiao Wen's broken stick, prompting her to burst into tears. Perplexed, San asked why she was crying and Xiao Wen confessed she felt guilty for always causing trouble for him. Upon hearing Xiao Wen's tears, San comforted her and encouraged her to sleep, assuring her that the stars would visit her dreams as her grandmother. Xiao Wen also requested San's help to repair her broken smartwatch. San received a red square clock from her and improvised by drawing a temporary clock on her hand. The next morning, Xiao Wen observed the neighbor's son, who was her age, reciting poetry. San called her for breakfast, 
realizing it was time for Xiao Wen to attend school. When San attempted to enroll Xiao Wen, he visited her uncle to discuss it further. San inquired about Xiao Wen's parents, learning that her mother had passed away and her father's identity remained unknown. Xiao Wen's uncle expressed disappointment, prompting San to take responsibility for her education. However, San realized that he couldn't legally adopt Xiao Wen as he was single. He visited his female friend's house, where it was revealed that she and San's male friend were married, unbeknownst to San. Despite the surprise, San was relieved that his friends could become Xiao Wen's legal guardians. At school, Xiao Wen hesitated to enter and had to be carried inside by San forcefully. After dropping Xiao Wen off at school, San took her watch to the service center. When Xiao Wen returned home, San presented her with the repaired smartwatch. Curious, Xiao Wen asked if her grandmother's voice was still on the watch, only to feel saddened upon realizing she would never hear it again. San comforted her, reassuring her that miracles were possible. As San delved into an old book, his ex-girlfriend arrived, informing him that her husband had died in an accident and pleading for his help. Despite her plea, San firmly refused until Xiao Wen dragged him to the park. There they encountered San's father dancing with women. Xiao Wen urged San to speak with his father. San explained to his father that he needed him for his business. Reluctantly, San's father agreed. Later, San found himself facing the decomposed corpse of his ex-girlfriend's husband. Overwhelmed with disgust and sorrow, San struggled, but his father's encouragement spurred him on. Following his father's instructions, San successfully reconstructed the corpse. As his ex-girlfriend expressed gratitude, San's father suddenly collapsed. San's sister blamed him for their father's condition, accusing him of giving their father alcohol. Saddened by her words, San sought his father's permission to visit Xiao Wen's school. During San's absence, his father secretly rejoiced at his son's newfound sense of responsibility. At school, San witnessed Xiao Wen and the neighbor's son performing a drama where the boy's mother purportedly died. The mother abruptly removed her son from the stage, while San and his friends faced a stern rebuke from Xiao Wen's teacher. Concerned, the teacher showed San a painting by Xiao Wen depicting a funeral scene. Approaching Xiao Wen, who remained silent, San attempted to console her. Later, upon returning home from visiting his father, San found Xiao Wen studying in the dim light of a desk lamp due to a power outage. He promptly switched on the room light. Upon seeing San, Xiao Wen greeted him warmly. As days passed, San continued with his funeral service activities while Xiao Wen attended school. Occasionally, they found time to play and even took vacations to the beach together. Meanwhile, San persisted in his efforts to obtain a recording of Xiao Wen's grandmother's voice. Consulting with IT experts, he eventually acquired the recording saved on a flash drive. One day, upon returning home from school, Xiao Wen was pleasantly surprised to find their house tidier and adorned with birthday decorations. San was present but kept his hands hidden. He then presented Xiao Wen with her tiger doll, which had been left behind by her grandmother. Overjoyed, Xiao Wen expressed her happiness at seeing her beloved doll restored. San showed Xiao Wen how to press the tiger's tail, allowing her to hear her grandmother's voice. Overwhelmed with surprise and joy, Xiao Wen broke into tears of happiness. San had gone to great lengths for Xiao Wen's sake. As Xiao Wen embraced him, San's own eyes teared up with emotion. After dropping Xiao Wen off at school, San was approached by Xiao Wen's uncle and a woman who wasn't his spouse. Xiao Wen's uncle claimed the woman was Xiao Wen's biological mother. Doubtful, San accused them of lying. Despite Xiao Wen's uncle seeming tired of the situation, he eventually left. However, the woman persisted in proving she was Xiao Wen's biological mother. She explained she had been imprisoned abroad and presumed dead due to no contact. Despite giving detailed information about Xiao Wen's birth, San walked away, unable to accept the sudden revelation. At nightfall, San tied Xiao Wen's hair and inquired about her mother. Xiao Wen responded that she had no mother and promptly went to bed. Later, the woman claiming to be Xiao Wen's mother returned. San explained that he couldn't make decisions alone, as his two friends were also involved in caring for Xiao Wen. However, when the woman knelt and asked for three days, San relented. During those three days, San made the most of his time with Xiao Wen. He prepared plenty of meals, and everyone at the dinner table appeared content. Despite this, Xiao Wen noticed San's subdued demeanor and questioned him directly. San swiftly masked his emotions, not wanting to cause concern. Xiao Wen mentioned a parent meeting scheduled for the following day. While the three adults were eager to attend, Xiao Wen only required one person to accompany her. In the end, San attended the meeting at Xiao Wen's school. During the event, there was a parent-child competition in which San participated. 
He showcased his skills in a fan dance, captivating the other children and parents. As the parents and children sat facing each other, Xiao Wen presented a self-portrait she had painted of San. Grateful to San, Xiao Wen expressed that thanks to him, she no longer feared losing her grandmother, as she now had a father. Later that night, San tied Xiao Wen's hair and inquired about her father's identity, address, and phone number. Xiao Wen answered everything correctly, but she protested to San due to her drowsiness. Eventually, she drifted off to sleep, and the rain began to fall. Xiao Wen's biological mother arrived by taxi, and San carried Xiao Wen into the taxi under her mother's umbrella. San handed over Xiao Wen's belongings and cautioned her mother to take good care of her. He even instructed Xiao Wen's mother on her sleeping position, displaying his protectiveness. However, an argument between them awakened Xiao Wen, who then referred to San as her father. Despite his reluctance, the taxi departed, and San, unable to let go of the little girl, chased after them in the rain. Exhausted, he eventually halted in the middle of the road. The following day, San reclined, listening to his friend's conversation, which soon escalated into an argument over Xiao Wen's departure. Shortly after, San received news of his father's passing. Stricken with grief over the loss of both his father and Xiao Wen, San tended to his father's affairs until after the cremation. Despite his sister's desire to bury their father's ashes, San resisted, honoring their father's wishes. With the assistance of his friends, he took the ashes to the beach, placing them in a tube and igniting the wick. They watched as the ashes scattered into the sky like fireworks, realizing his father's intention of avoiding an extravagant funeral. While driving home, San received a distressing call from Xiao Wen, who had gone missing. He searched tirelessly for her until late into the night. Just as he was returning home to rest, he heard Xiao Wen's cries from behind. San scolded her sternly, but Xiao Wen insisted she would never truly be lost, as she remembered her father's name, address, and phone number. San's anger melted away as he embraced the child. Later, San's friends organized a wedding celebration. Xiao Wen's mother made a brief appearance to return Xiao Wen's belongings, which San accepted graciously. He then extended an invitation for her to join his business, ensuring she could remain close to her daughter. That night, they gathered outside, gazing at the stars in the sky, marking the end of their journey together. And thus the story ends as well. Hope you like the story. Subscribe for more amazing recaps like this. Thanks for watching.